We are taking you to Nice along the beautiful shores of the French Riviera. We'll walk the little lanes and look at some shops. We'll show you the beach, the open market at Corsalea, and bring you on a walking tour through the old town. We'll be spending three days in Nice because there is so much to see in the city and also in the nearby towns along the Côte d'Azur. Here we are arriving in Nice now. During the program, we'll be sharing with you detailed tips on how to get the most out of your visit. Great station. It's a more of an old-fashioned station. And so you'll probably have to carry your suitcases down a staircase and then you walk through the underground corridor. But fortunately, there's an escalator that will bring you up into the main station area. And it's on the north edge of the city, so get a taxi. In our case, we'll be staying at a hotel down by the seaside at the Beau Rivage, ideally located near the old town, the water, and the new town. The first thing we want to do is head down to the waterfront, to the beautiful beach, and take some pictures. It's a lovely, long and broad beach, and we've got a sunny day in November to enjoy it. The beach itself is lined with hotels and apartment buildings for about two miles. It's not exactly a fine sand beach, it's more of a pebble beach, and the water is quite clean. You see they're fishing out there. Nobody's swimming in November. Nobody's even sunbathing, but just enjoying the sunshine and the sights around it. One of the greatest waterfront strolls to be found anywhere is this Promenade des Anglais. It's a broad pedestrian paved area running right alongside the beach with beautiful views out to the blue sea on one side and the grand old buildings lining the street on the other. It's been the main center of attraction in Nice for the past 150 years, ever since visitors have been streaming in. You see the Negresco Hotel in the background, one of the great five-star institutions of the city. Here is the Opera Nice Côte d'Azur. The first opera here opened in 1776, and this building was created a century later. The south coast of France along the sunny Mediterranean Sea is one of the world's most beautiful destinations. Dotted with colorful seaside towns and inland villages, you'll find that Nice makes the perfect home base from which you can easily reach those other destinations like Cannes and Monaco. Nice has got the biggest collection of hotels. It's got a wonderful old town, a very attractive new town, great transportation with the tram and the major train station, and just a beautiful place to be. At the east end, the promenade changes name to Quai des Etats Unis, the United States of America. And there's a lovely memorial in a Greek revival style there to thank the United States for their help in ending World War I. At this end, you'll find the Cours Salea, just behind that memorial, a block inland from the water, one of the great outdoor food markets and picturesque spots of Europe. This plaza features fresh produce and flowers throughout the day, and many of these stalls are open right into the early evening, except on Mondays when it becomes an antique market and some other used goods peddled by colorful vendors. They've got a whole variety of furniture, there's clothing, jewelry, the usual, the bric-a-brac, the old books, antique electrical items, you've got old cameras. Well, when I travel, I am just a sucker for antique markets. I rarely ever buy anything, and I'm really not there to shop, to purchase. It's just to look around, to enjoy the people, to look at the other shops nearby, and have a look at all of these hundreds and thousands of items on sale. Inevitably, there's going to be some cafes near the open market as well, so you can stop for a break if you like, or just take a walk on by and check it out for later back into the market, you might even find something here that you want to purchase. It could be something authentic from the region. The flower shops are one of the most interesting features of Nice. Bouquets composed of the most exquisite flowers of every size and description, from tiny buttonholed sprays to masses of blossoms two feet in diameter. Flowers are so important to Provence. 
not just for decoration for your table at home, but even more important because of the perfume industry. Grasse is the capital of that, the city of Grasse. We'll show you that as part of our series on Provence as well. Chocolate lovers should look for the famous store Maison Au Air in its landmark Belle Epoque building at the West End. The most famous artist who lived in Nice, Henri Matisse, lived right here at the Cour in that yellow building at the far end of the plaza. He had a great view out his window, which he depicted in many paintings. He moved to a larger mansion now converted to the Matisse Museum. Matisse lived in and around Nice for his last 37 years, about which he said, I couldn't believe how lucky I was. And then there's soca. This is one of the great foods of the south of France. And Chez Therese is the place to go. Here I am with Therese herself. That was a treat. Soca is like a crepe, a flatbread, and it's quite unique because it's made from chickpea flour. And it's especially found in the Ligurian area, anywhere from Nice around the coastline into Italy, down to Pisa. Well, of course, it's a food market, so there's lots of other eating options here at the Cour. You'll find bread and cheese, and of course, always lots of fresh fruits, ingredients for an instant picnic. It's nice to take a little time to sit down and relax at a cafe for a drink and a rest and some people watching. Instead of being in a constant rush while you're traveling, stop and take a look at the passing scene. The church facing the core is the Chapel of the Misericordia, or the Chapel of Mercy. It's built in the Italian Baroque style, constructed between 1750 and 1770 by some architects from Torino nearby. It has a very elaborate Baroque interior. You can even buy some original paintings directly from the artist depicting the scenes all around you. That'll go nicely with the photographs that you're taking. Of course, olives are essential to the cuisine of Provence, so it's only natural you're going to find a shop selling olives and olive oils and balsamic vinegars of all kinds. Great variety here. Just inland from the Corsalea, you'll find the old town of Nice. For many visitors, it will be the highlight of the city, wandering through these narrow pedestrian lanes lined with historic buildings and shops, a lot of restaurants, bars, town squares with fountains and statues, a church here and there. It's just a great spot to explore and hang out. Called the Vieux Nice, the old town is home to art galleries, little shops, small restaurants, bars and cafes, making it the perfect spot for strolling. In the old town maze of narrow lanes occupies a triangular slice about 300 yards long on each side. We're going to walk you through it day and night. So this old town is not a huge area that you're going to get lost in, but you'd be amazed at how big it seems as you're walking around because of all the little lanes and alleys that somehow connect and interconnect. So you might end up walking around in circles a little bit, which makes it seem much bigger than it really is. In the off season, the character of Vieux Nice is quite peaceful with not many people and no cars but in the summer, it gets very crowded. Here's a map of the old town with a suggested easy route that'll take you right through and around the heart of the old town. You could do this in one hour if that's all the time you've got, or you could spend one day. As you enter the old town from the end of the Cursalea, one of the first streets you'll come to is the very atmospheric Rue de la Poissonnerie and this has got more of the shops and restaurants that you'll find throughout the old town. The old town of Nice has a special charm that you just don't find in the rest of the modern city. So you really wanna focus a lot of time in this fascinating pedestrian zone on the east end of the waterfront. And we'll point out a nice way to navigate through this labyrinth to get you in and around and show you the main highlights there's a couple of main lanes. There's Rue Droite that'll take you right through the center of the old town. 
and then you take a left and walk along Rue de la Boucherie, and that'll bring you down to the Place du Palais, and then back to Courcelles. So it's kind of a round trip right through the town, and feel free to wander up these little side lanes. The old town consists of narrow labyrinths, not really streets, more of a maze with blocks of shops of every kind along these narrow twisting lanes. If you come in the summertime, it will be a lot busier. So you take your pick. We suggest that you might visit during the off season instead to avoid the crowds and enjoy the cooler weather. Europeans crave that brief summer sunshine. So work around their schedule and come between November and April when the weather is still wonderful. You'll be wandering this way and that as you meander through the old town, but you'll always come back to Rue Droite, which goes like a straight line through the middle of the old town. It's a good axis to get your bearings, to go out to the left, go out to the right, and then come back to the central spine. The old town of Nice is something very special, not so much because of historic monuments or great churches or important single buildings that are inside the old town, but just the total atmosphere, the environment, the simple walking lanes, the shops and the people. There's actual locals living here, their kids are out playing, the residents are upstairs looking down from their windows, and you really get a feeling of community here, of authenticity, especially in the off season when it's not too crowded with tourists walking through the lanes. That helps quite a bit too. Typical example of a staircase street. It branches off from Rue Droit. This is Rue du Malena, and there are several of these side lanes that go up the hill. They're a regular street down on the flatland, and then it goes up, so there's no cars and, well, a few scooters perhaps, and motorcycles and bicycles, but largely we're entering a pedestrian zone, a typical local residential neighborhood. It's interesting to see here the working population at home. Comfortable, affordable housing in the middle of the city. Another steep lane, Rue du Chateau, and there are several. These lanes are some of the most picturesque streets in town. But don't worry, you don't have to climb them. And if you don't feel like walking, you can take this little tourist train on a route that will bring you through the old town and then up onto the hill for a view. Most of the shops in the old town are independent and unique. You've got boutiques, you've got crafts, you've got all kinds of great browsing to do. So different than modern shopping malls. You'll find souvenir shops with the typical Provençal items, especially the colorful fabrics and the pottery. There's also lots of food in these stores. Go for the cookies, maybe. We're just strolling along together. This is part of our visit to the south of France, a small group of us traveling together and sharing in the sights. We especially enjoy the local cuisine of this casual restaurant. They specialize in crepes and soca and salads, and that's really all you need for a very nice lunch. Creperie Breton. And the friendly couple running the place really made us feel welcome. They are the owners, the cook and the waitress, and the food was delicious. You might be surprised at the variety of crepes on offer and that soca. And then we continue wandering about through this endlessly fascinating maze of lanes. The Palais Lascaré is the largest civil Baroque building in the old town and the region. It perpetuates the reputation of Charles Emmanuel II, who was Duke of Savoy, considered one of the principal families of the Nice nobility of the 17th century. The palace is influenced by the Genoese Baroque and unites a set of 17th century embellishments and some changes from the 18th century. The building encloses two small courtyards uh, on which by arched bays open up a monumental staircase. This lobby is free and open to the public. 
Rue Rosetti is another one of these picturesque steep lanes coming up from the old town. Notice the sidewalks are staircases. In this case, there is a little road, one lane road down the middle, and local folks hanging out. Rue Rosetti is just a few blocks long, but changes character several times along the way from the hill swooping down, and then it leads into Place Rosetti, kind of an Italian-style architecture as you find throughout the old town, and this is a great gathering spot. We'll show you more of this place in the evening. You can see on the map how Rue and Place Rosetti are right in the middle of the old town. Very easy to find. Another major gathering point in the old town. You'll find here bars and restaurants, little shops. There's a fountain and cafes and this Italianate architecture of the old pastel colored buildings around the Place. Because of its central location with so many roads going through, you'll probably return here a few times during your visit. The Cathedral of Nice is located on this square. It's Cathedral Santa Parete. And this is something that could be in northern Italy. It's beautiful with these colors and the Baroque styles. It was built during the second half of the 17th century, a time period when this area was more Italian than French. The interior of the church has 10 chapels with a floor plan in the Latin cross that was based somewhat on the church of Santa Susanna in Rome. Typical of the Italian Baroque, it's highly decorated. Many paintings and architectural flourishes. At twilight, the beauty of the building is at its best. In fact, anywhere you go at twilight, it's a wonderful experience. Here in the old town, you've got that ambient lighting on the buildings and shops. And we're gonna take you around through the same places, daytime and nighttime, give you that contrast. Walk along Rue de la Boucherie to find uh, other great focal point, Place du Palais de Justice, which retains an Italian feeling that once permeated the entire town. It's got French sidewalk restaurants serving crepes and wine, and a neoclassical courthouse looking like a Greek temple. It is definitely worth visiting in the daytime when it's quite busy, and then again in the evening when it's even more busy. This Justice Square with the courthouse looming above has got very popular restaurants all around it and in the nearby lanes. Draws a lot of people. Quite close to Place Rosetti, it just takes a few minutes to walk over here from practically anywhere in the old town. It's very safe walking around in the evening in this old town area, especially on the main lanes where you've got the shops, there's people, Everybody is out and about, as long as you're out there at a reasonable hour from twilight right on up through the end of dinner. The social life here at the Place du Palais de Justice is even busier at night than during the day. In fact, so popular that at 9 p.m. many of these bars raise their prices. So you might want to get in and have your drinks by 8, 8.30 and then settle in for dinner somewhere. Of course, the hour of sunset varies considerably during the year. For example, in December, it gets dark at 5 p.m. and in the middle of June, gets dark at 9.30 p.m. Either way, you're sure to enjoy an evening stroll. We'll continue our look at Nice in the evening later in the movie, but now we're going to bring you downtown the next morning after breakfast at our hotel. In this case, we're staying at the Beaurevage Hotel, a delightful spot right down by the waterfront next to the old town in Corsalea. Very convenient location. We're going to have a look at the very attractive downtown of Nice. We'll take you down the main shopping street, show you some of the side lanes, and do a little wine tasting. You'll obviously take time to explore Nice's main commercial street, Avenue Jean Médecin stretching about 10 blocks from Place Massena north to the train station and packed with many boutiques and anchored at the lower end by the large department store, Galeries Lafayette. You can see on the map of downtown how the main street goes right through the middle, just near the old town and the busy shopping hub of Place Massena. And we'll also take you over to another great pedestrian street, Rue de France. There is a convenient new tram service in Nice running along the main avenue, practically from the beach and all the way to the train station and beyond, which makes it very easy 
to get from one end of town to the other. So it's really not too critical that you stay at a hotel down by the waterfront, but of course it is more pleasant to be down by the shore. Riding along on this new tram is a very smooth experience. The tracks are still quite level, so you have a nice view of downtown passing by as you look out the windows. The tram is convenient because it's right at street level, so it's easy to just walk right on, and there are stops every few blocks, so it's easy to catch. And trams like this have become quite popular once again in Europe. It's sort of a rebirth of an old idea. A lot of money has been spent by the government to upgrade and improve the city with the new tram and new parks, really enhancing the quality of life. Here's a quick flashback to the year 2006 showing the amount of construction work necessary to create this tram line down the main street. It's all finished now. It's really quite wonderful to see how this main street has been transformed in recent years by the tram. All the automobiles have been removed except service vehicles. Sidewalks widened. Now it's a great place for pedestrians and bicycles and people and the tram running down the middle. When locals are referring to this street, they don't even call it Avenue Jean Medecine. They just say the Avenue because it's by far the primary shopping street of Nice. Place Massena is a great hub of the city, straddling between the old town and the new town. And adjacent to it are beautiful arcades of Galeries Lafayette and other major stores. Just beyond that central square is a remarkable new park called the Promenade du Payon. It's 1.2 kilometers in length and it's a result of nearly 10 years of urban redevelopment in the heart of Nice. They ripped down an old bus station, they removed various other buildings, and they put in this beautiful park with a mirrored reflecting fountain. It's kind of a trick fountain. You can walk through it if you dare. It covers over 3,000 square meters with the beautiful trees and green lawns all around it, cafe services. It's a great place for the families and it's open from early in the morning till late at night. Very safe and clean, it's well protected. There's a lot of staff around, public facilities. It's really a sterling example of urban renewal. The park is also open in the evening, so it's a great place for the families to come out after work, before dinner, enjoying the playground facilities. The park is right next to Place Massena, so it's really easy to get back into the shopping part of town from here. It just takes a couple of minutes, and you're walking along this beautiful arcaded street. We're at the lower end of the Avenue, and there are more shops tucked away in these arcades. That great department store, Galleries Lafayette, the largest department store chain you find throughout France. The Italian style architecture of these arcades with their red ochre construction harkens back to the days a century ago when Nice was more Italian than French. From here it's only a two minute walk south to the beach or turn around and plunge back into the downtown shopping arena. This colorful shop called Pilon was founded in France in 1985. It's a gift shop with a variety of colorful and animated objects and innovative designs and it's been a big hit you see it now in just about every city in france the basilica of notre dame is the largest church in nice it was completed in 1868 in the gothic style but it's not the cathedral which is in the old town in the midst of this busy street the church was pretty empty but Right across the street, there's another kind of cathedral for shopping, and that was packed. This urban shopping mall on the main street of Nice offers 100 shops in a very stylish setting. Of course, you'll also find restaurants, bars, and cafes inside. Nice Etoile. It's wonderful that this modern multi-level shopping mall is right in the heart of downtown, so it complements the existing street level retail rather than luring people outside of the city. Back out on the main street we ran into a little political demonstration. That's a common sight throughout Europe. 
When exploring the downtown of Nice, don't limit yourself to the main avenue. There are interesting streets along both sides. A good example is this lovely pedestrian zone in the newer part of Nice. This is Rue de France. It used to be the main street of the city about 100 years ago, and it's still one of the most important streets. Fortunately, been converted into a pedestrian mall. A lot of shops, restaurants, and there's some hotels scattered along the street, and it'll lead you right back towards Place Massena. It runs parallel to the shore about four blocks inland. It's a wonderful street. Boulevard Victor Hugo is the main road with many affordable hotels that cuts right through this central area. This is the kind of really local and authentic neighborhood that's often overlooked by typical guidebooks and video tours, but this is really part of the heart and soul of Nice. This is where locals hang out, where they go shopping, where they get a bite to eat, go to the cafe, have a beer, which makes it a good place for shopping and for people watching. It's so amazing how these pedestrian streets have transformed the cities of Europe. Just a decade ago, these kinds of streets would have been filled with cars and trucks and pollution and noise. And the movement swept through the continent to convert these little streets in the heart of the town into pedestrian malls. But over on the east side of downtown, they still have streets with cars and narrow sidewalks, and it's exciting. It's a hustle bustle neighborhood. Again, not many tourists over here, but you should come over and take a look just a few blocks east of the main avenue. You've got lively streets and shops everywhere, sidewalk cafes, views back at Notre Dame. Uh, as you walk along, you even get a view of the National Theater, a large modern building, and other side streets that wind around. It's a great place to explore. There's a wonderful Matisse Museum located in a park slightly away from the center of town, a little too far to walk to, but you can easily reach it by public bus or just take a taxi. Matisse lived in the city of Nice for many years and created some of his finest paintings here. You might be able to visualize some of those scenes that were painted from his room looking out onto the beautiful blue sea with the bright colors of the south of France and Provence. Just next to the Matisse Museum, they love to play pétanque or boule. The idea is to get your ball near the little red ball and to knock the other balls as far away as possible. This is the national sport of France, especially here in the south of France, rivaling only perhaps football, or as we say, soccer. It's believed that some variation of this game has been played for several thousand years. And you can see why it's a casual, friendly game. It's a chance to socialize and have a little fun. Next to the Matisse Museum are some major Roman ruins a small amphitheater, housing foundations, and a small archeology span museum that remind us the Romans had a major presence here 2,000 years ago. Several other Nice museums will compete for your attention. The Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art and the Chagall Museum with the world's largest collection of the artist's works. France is a wine country. There's no question, France produces the best wine in the world. And there's something special about it. It becomes a ritual. In the case of the Beaujolais Nouveau, it's an annual event on the third Thursday of November every year. It's the official release of Beaujolais Nouveau, which is a fresh young wine. In fact, it's in the bottle eight weeks after it's been harvested. So it's very fresh and very young. And it's kind of a pink purple color and frankly it's not the best wine of France it's kind of raw you can get much better Bordeaux that are aged for five or ten years but this is a fun thing because the wine shops celebrate with the release of Beaujolais Nouveau with free tastings so people come down and line up on the sidewalk and gather around and 
Oh, this is great fun, free wine. It's a national holiday of sorts. Celebrated around the world because these cases and container loads are shipped everywhere. And it's a special day when Beaujolais Nouveau arrives. They sell a million cases of this Beaujolais Nouveau all around the world. Half of it is consumed within France. It's the biggest wine party ever on the day that it's released. The wine that's, that, uh, that, that has been harvested, the grape has been harvested this year in September. And so it's a great party every year in France, the, day, the third Thursday of every November comes out the Beaujolais Nouveau. These are the new ones. This is the new one, so it's vintage 2013, as it says in the bottle. Mm -hmm. And so forbidden by the law to open it before today, so it's a... Uh, oh, really? Uh, by oh, law? Yeah. Oh, yeah. By law? Better not. Has it been a good year? 2013. I think it's been a good year. 2013, it was a good year. It was very good. It was 2013. Banana, raspberry, <laughs> strawberry even sometimes. And um, so that's, that's a classic Beaujolais Nouveau. So today is Beaujolais Nouveau day. Yes, I like it. It's a good, good year? Yeah, it's a good year. Thank you. The old town of Nice is especially lovely to walk through at night. The shops are open, the restaurants are open, and people are out for a stroll. The pedestrian zone here is not just two or three streets without cars, it's an entire neighborhood, covers a vast network of lanes and alleys. And during the off season, it's mostly for locals. Appreciate this intersection, if you would, for a moment. Here we have three pedestrian lanes coming together. We've got Rue Droit, Rue Collet, and Rue Francoise, all crashing together in this wonderful little spot surrounded by cafes and shops and people. The Old Town is perhaps the most interesting part of Nice, fascinating for its labyrinth of narrow streets, picturesque and animated peoples and buildings expressing something Italian in their general character. Now it's early evening, which is a magical time to be out strolling, of course, with the twilight and the shop lights. Very safe, very friendly, lovely place to stroll. And in the evening, the old town is alive. The shops stay open, especially in this tourist area. The shops are open till 9 p.m., some of them even later. Many of them do close in the afternoon for siesta. We are in the south of Europe and they follow that traditional custom. So it might not be best to stroll here at 1 p.m. or 2 or 3 o'clock. A lot of these stores are closed, but they'll be reopening at three or four o'clock. Rue du Collet is one of the main lanes of the old town. It'll change names a few times up ahead, and it just wanders, it meanders. It's not quite straight. There's a little bit of a curve here and there. You've got some cafes, you've got tourist shops, you've got local shops, and people out walking, especially here at twilight. This is perfect. As you walk along Rue du Collet, you will soon arrive at this little intersection. It's a charming spot where three lanes come together. It's called Place Centrale. And at this little place, it's a simple little affair. You've got a little restaurant that sells the soca and other Nishwa's specialties. You've got a cafe on the other side. There's a little food market here. You can buy some gadgets and gizmos. This fresh produce market's fun. You can shop for some clothing. All within an arm's reach of this Place Centrale. A few hundred years ago, this was already a very old part of town and had become somewhat run down and dilapidated. And it's really just in the past century, it's come back to life again. So there's a beauty in this old town of just simply walking. Now, it's often overlooked, for example, in guidebooks or in historical memoirs or even dismissed as a place that's kind of dark and narrow and congested, but uh, it really deserves to be front and center when you come to visit Nice. 
It's what makes the city so very special, along with the beachfront, of course, the marvelous white broad beach and the promenades down by the Mediterranean Sea. The modern downtown certainly is lovely. You'll want to be sure to also visit that downtown area. But these little back lanes are really something special. And yes, there are plenty of art galleries along the way. You might even get a chance to meet the artist himself. Usually they're inside and maybe doing a little bit of painting. It's like a street side museum of contemporary art. This is art that's very much up to date. It was just created yesterday. There are several especially picturesque intersections here in the old town where the lanes come together and merge with beautiful lighting at night. And then as you keep walking along Rue du Collet, it changes names and becomes Rue de la Boucherie, same street. It just keeps winding along as you pass more of these shops. And you notice they're open in the evening. We're walking at about 7.30 and there's plenty of people out. This, of course, is a very safe neighborhood. It's a family kind of place. <laughs> On the opposite side of the old town, the east side, this pedestrian lane joins up with a busy street, which leads into Place Garibaldi in the newer part of town. Like many cities in Europe, especially France, they have communal bike rental racks. Place Garibaldi is another major square in Nice. It's a transit hub. The tram goes through here. There's a bus stop that'll take you on to Monaco, about 30 minutes away. This place has recently been renovated and upgraded. It's looking beautiful. And it's named after Garibaldi, who was born in Nice. He was the great unifier of Italy, which used to own this territory until the end of the 19th century. This neighborhood is quite lively because people live here. Most of the upper floors in the old town are residential apartments with full-time residents, and that gives it a real home quality. You see the life in the streets here is what modern major urban centers are trying to recreate, trying to strive. Real streets with real people, living out their daily lives. And it's on a human scale because you don't have skyscrapers, you don't have massive structures all around. It's people and their homes and the shops down below with a steady stream of visitors and locals walking on into the evening. We're going to take you on an extended evening walk through the old town at the end of the program. But for now, we're taking you to an evening viewpoint to watch the sunset along the shore and then up to the top of Castle Hill for a spectacular view looking down over the town. To get this view, you walk along the east end of the waterfront promenade on the Quai des Estats Unis. And to the end, you'll have this rocky outcrop with a terrace with a commanding view looking back along the pebbly beach of Nice. The view gets even more spectacular when you go up to the top of Castle Hill, or as they call it, the Chateau. Here's a quick view from Google Earth showing how the hill of the castle towers over the old town of Nice and the city beyond. The easiest way to get up to the top of this hill is take the elevator. You pay a small fee, it's about one euro, and it's well worth it. Otherwise, you've got to walk up a huge staircase. It's the equivalent of going up over 100 meters high. So it's really way up in the sky. You don't want to walk it if you can avoid it. So take the elevator. It's quick, it's simple, especially late in the day like this. There's no crowd, there's no line. And you come out on top and start enjoying the view. And right away, you're looking down on the old town and the Corsalea. There's all the booths getting ready for the next morning's market. There's a map posted to help you find your way to locate viewpoints on both sides, but it can be a little confusing. There's no signs on the paths. You want to go up this unmarked staircase. Don't go straight on the main lane because that does not bring you to the top. And you can walk up a little higher 
This little small child can make it. Oh, it's a big climb for this little girl. So that shows you can do it, no problem. So keep walking when you get up to the top. They even have a waterfall. It's an artificial waterfall that was put here in the 1830s to help attract the tourist nobility from England and the rest of France to come on down and visit Nice. The shoreline view gets even better as the night lights come on. While you're up on the hill enjoying the town view, be sure to walk to the other side of the hill for the harbor view. And there's a beautiful green park in between. Looking down from the other side of the hill, you see the small boat harbor called Port Limpia. And in the distance, Cape Denise. It's believed this Castle Hill was the site of some of the earliest settlements in the area. They lived up here for self-defense. In very early times, the Ligurians, who were the first inhabitants of Nice, had their dwellings up on the rock of the castle. And later, it's probable that the earliest Greek settlers lived there. But as times became more settled, they began spreading down onto the plain and the old hill town became a mere fortress to be used in time of need. And a fortress it remained, developing as centuries followed each other into a great and impregnable castle. Another way to get up here and back down is on the tourist tram. If you have the patience or the proper timing to stick around for the late sunset, it reaches the visual peak. This is really grand with the lights blazing down below, the golden sunset off in the horizon. This makes for one of those travel events that you will just never forget. And when you're done, you can take that same elevator ride back down again, timing it so that you get down before the elevator shuts for the evening. Or you could walk down. It's not as hard as walking up, but so much easier to just simply ride the elevator. Now we're going to take you on a walk through the old town of Nice at night. It's a very special time to be here. Shops are still open until 8.30, 9 o'clock, depending on the season. Restaurants and bars, cafes, of course, go well into the night. There's always lots of people around, so it's a friendly and interesting place to roam. This old town is so attractive that just seeing it during the daytime, which you've probably already done, it's not enough. You want to come back and enjoy it once again at night when it looks like a different place with this special twilight ambiance. Depending on the season, it might be this dark at 6 p.m. in the winter, for example, or at 9.30 in the summertime. Either way, that period just after twilight is the most magical time to be out. You've still got a little bit of lingering ambient light in the sky and the shop windows are on, the street lights are on, and it's very lively. Walking through these narrow, dark lanes illuminated by shop light and livened by people passing by makes you feel like you're in one of the dream places of the earth. You have to give Nice time and get out of your rut before you awaken to its unique characteristics. And then if you detach yourselves from the amusement seekers, the time killers, the apathetic, the bored, and the blasé tourists, you begin to realize that the metropolis of the Riviera is a world in itself, a reservoir for exploration and reflection. Nice is the largest city along the Côte d'Azur, and for the population of about one million, it's the second largest French city along the shores of the Mediterranean after Marseille makes an ideal home base for seeing all of the sights along the coast. It is one of the most beautiful places and offers a large number of hotels and restaurants in all price ranges. Nice is centrally located with excellent rail and bus services that connect all of the towns along this coastline. And as we're walking along through the lanes here, there's not really a lot to describe. It's mostly interesting visuals, just seeing the shops and the people, the old buildings, the architecture, and it does bring to mind the very old history of Nice. So as we walk along, let me just reflect a little bit and tell you some about the very long history 
of this city in the south of France. 3,000 years of history boiled down to three minutes. Several hundred years ago, nearly the entire population lived in the old town. That really was the entire city. There was a few people living up on the hill and a few around the bend over by the harbor. A few houses scattered, of course, up in the hillsides in the interior. But one could imagine that at least 90% of the population was clustered right here in what is now the old town. Well, the history of Nice, you can imagine, is very long and tangled up with a lot of warfare and a lot of different tribes of people coming through because Nice has always been on a frontier. Even today, it's very much close to the borders of Italy, and being on the Mediterranean, it's really a frontier with the north coast of Africa as well. And this has always been the case for thousands of years. It's been a crossroads. The Riviera first enters into the actual historical period about six centuries before the birth of Christ with a group called the Phocians, who came ultimately from Greece. They were living along the shores of the Mediterranean and were battling with the Persians and ended up over in this part of what is now the Riviera. These early Greek settlers were often harassed by the native Ligurian tribes. And so these Phocians appealed to ancient Rome to intervene and help them out. And this was in 154 BC. And this is what brought Rome into the picture. And they stayed and occupied the area for the next 500 years. And the Mediterranean coast was declared a Roman province which occurred in the reign of Augustus about 2,000 years ago. By about the fourth century AD with the decline of the Roman Empire, Christianity became pretty well established. And then by the early Middle Ages, the Nice area attained some commercial importance. The French Revolution of 1789 affected Nice from a variety of reasons and ended up by making it part of France, which it remained until it then detached from France in 1814. At that time, Nice was once more united to the fortunes of the House of Savoy, a royal family then based in northern Italy, bringing a strong Italian influence to the area. And so it remained for close to half a century when further political developments brought about its return to France under Napoleon III. It's been French ever since. At the same time, in 1860, construction of the railroad was completed and the beginnings of the tourism boom started. Travelers could now arrive easily from all over Europe and Nice took off as one of the great centers of tourism. After such a busy evening with all that walking through the old town and sampling the Beaujolais, got to get some rest and then up and at them the next day. I was out quite early for a walk right after breakfast and was surprised to find so many people out. The cafe was alive, there was customers sitting around, this is most unusual. And the lighting was beautiful, it seemed like too good to be real, it almost seemed like, uh, wait a minute, it is a movie shoot. Yeah, these guys have got their equipment and cameras and they're working hard at about 7.30 in the morning. It's almost inevitable if you spend enough time in these beautiful places, you're going to run into film productions. Maybe they're shooting a commercial, perhaps it's an episode for a television program, maybe it's a feature film. There might even be a famous star around somewhere, but it's best just to kind of stay out of their way. You can take a look, you can take a few pictures if you like, but just don't cause any problems. Another surprise this early was to see so much action at a pub. Well, they drank a lot of beer last night, apparently. They've got to restock all those barrels. Well, folks, it's finally time to leave Nice. We've enjoyed a long visit here. We've shown you all around the town, the old town, the downtown. We've also taken you to nearby cities and other movies, over to Cannes and Antibes, Sao Paulo, over to Vance, Monaco, all around this amazing Côte d'Azur. Now we're heading out, we're taking taxi over to the train station, 
and we will continue on our merry journey to the next destination, which is going to be the Italian Riviera. We're heading for Cinque Terre. It's a pretty long train ride from Nice to Santa Margarita. That will be our base for exploring Cinque Terre and Portofino and other sites of that area. The train makes a brief stop in Monaco, one of the cleanest train stations you'll ever see. We have a big movie about Monaco you've got to take a look at. It's the world's richest country and in many ways an ideal model of urban planning. But that's another story. And then we carry on along the coast with some beautiful views of the Mediterranean Sea out the window. We've got a lot more movies about Provence and the south of France. Take a look at our YouTube channel.